Welcome to In the Workshop. This is making a fitting for a PM Research steam whistle. These PM Research steam whistles complete with valve are available from PM Research in the USA or a company called Forest Classics in the UK. Their service is excellent and the parts arrive quickly. Before I start this job I need to show you something. This is a view looking down the inlet of the whistle valve. And as you can see, the hole which carries the steam to the whistle is offset to one side. So it's very important when you make an adapter that your adapter is not so thick that it blocks up this hole. And the other thing, PM Research quarter by 40 threads are not the same pitch as we use in the UK. So just like the elbows, I re-thread them using a tap with the correct pitch. Now I can temporarily screw in a double union adapter and connect the airline to see if it works. As you can clearly hear, the volume level from this small whistle is deceptively loud. This part was taken from the traction engine by the owner and sent to me. What I intend to do is copy this part, but build in an integral quarter by 40 thread so you can mount the whistle. And it's most important that I copy this part accurately. That way the entire assembly can just be remounted to the traction engine using the original fixing bolts from the old part. My material of choice for this is a piece of alum bronze. It's not the easiest metal to machine, but it's much harder than brass. The finish on the work at the moment is terrible because the carbide tip needs changing. But this tip will be fine for most of the roughing cuts. I'll change the tool tip for the finishing cuts. You can see and hear that the tool is cutting intermittently. This situation will improve once I change the carbide tip. First of all, I need to turn the external diameter to match the one on the original part. The dimensions for this part of the operation are quite critical. This clip shows the tool cutting after I change the tip. And after I take the final cut, the finish is quite good and as you can see, it's the right size. The next part of the job is to reduce quite a bit of this piece of metal down to a quarter of an inch in diameter to be threaded a quarter by 40 threads per inch. The cutting tool is cutting much better now and needs a lot less pressure to force it into the work. Once again, this is a critical dimension. I need to turn this spigot that sticks out of the work down to exactly a quarter of an inch in diameter. After a while it looks like this and the micrometer is a good fit on it. I'm threading it quarter by 40 threads per inch using a tailstock die holder. And I'm threading it by hand. As I do that the actual lathe is moving. I really do need to bolt the lathe cabinet to the floor. And the only reason I haven't done that is because a while back I was going to buy a bigger lathe. But in the end I decided for the time being to keep my old Boxford. It works alright. It's quite a small lathe but it's more like the type that a beginner would have. So here's the story so far. The external diameter is correct. The end of the part is threaded quarter by 40 threads per inch, but there's no hole in it yet. Before I go any further, I'm going to check that the whistle valve screws onto the part that I've made, and it does. The next part of the job involves drilling a hole in the end of the work using a centre drill. After that, I change the centre drill for a drill of 1 8 of an inch in diameter. This clip shows me doing a quick clean up of the end of the work. And to finally finish it off, I used a file in order to get rid of any sharp edges on the thread. And on the edge of the outer diameter too. After a final test fit of the whistle valve to make sure everything's OK, it's time to part off the finished piece. To gauge the thickness, I'm using the original part as a template. But in reality, I need my part to be slightly thicker, which will make it stronger. Not very much thicker, just slightly. Here's a close-up of the parting operation, and the sound that the parting tool is making as it parts off this piece of Allen bronze tells me I need to sharpen it. This parting tool isn't a carbide tip tool, it's just a piece of high-speed steel. So periodically, it does need a light sharpening. And that's the parting off completed. 
Next, I've screwed a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut onto the thread. And I'm gripping the work in the chuck by the union nut. As you can see, it's not running wonderfully concentrically, but it doesn't matter because the part is firmly held in the chuck and it's pressed against the front of the chuck jaws so any cut that I make here will be parallel to the chuck jaws. Now I need to drill four small holes in this piece that I've made to match exactly the piece of metal that was originally supplied to me. I will be cleaning this surface on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper but not yet. What I'm doing is very carefully sticking the original part to the new part taking great care that it's in exactly the right place. After doing this, I left the part for about five minutes for the Loctite 603 to grab. This clip shows me selecting a drill bit that is a perfect fit in the existing holes. And now it's over to the drilling machine to drill the holes. At this stage, the union nut is still on the threads. I drilled most of the holes almost all the way through. Then to finish off, I moved the position of the part and drill the rest of the way through each of the holes with the part in a position where the drill bit didn't mark the machine vise. Then it was into the outer part of the workshop and onto the one inch belt sander to square off the part. After doing this I applied a bit of heat to the assembly and the Loctite gave way and here's the original part being used as a template to make a gasket. I put the twist drill that I used to drill the holes in the part that I'd made into my Proxon motor tool. I drilled the four holes for the bolts and used a hole punch to cut a hole in the centre. And that's about it. I put the gasket along with the original parts and four extra 10BA bolts and sealed it so nothing fell out. I firmly screwed the whistle valve onto the thread with a copper washer in between the valve and the base. When I tested it on compressed air it sounded fine. So I put the small plastic bag with the original parts and the new bolts inside the larger plastic bag along with the whistle and valve assembly. Job done, I just need to contact the customer now to send him an invoice. When I looked at my computer I couldn't find any history or details of this customer and I was a bit puzzled. But then I remembered that the order had come in through Facebook. So I just searched Messenger and found him. And that's it for this episode, I can do and say no more. Just stay safe and well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.